Everybody, Heather here. So today we're going to be working on our July 2013 Copic Coloring Card Kit. And this month I have picked this cute saturated canary image called Summer. I loved her long flowing hair and I thought that would be really cute to do with our Copic markers. Um, she's an unmounted stamp so I've included in your kit a piece of easy mount so you can mount her and get started stamping. If you're watching this video later on um, and like to see if it's still available, head over to the store and there's a dis there's a link down in the description box and then just type summer in the search bar at the top of the store and if it's available it will pop up. If not, check out some of the other kits that are there and if you're not into kits, maybe check out some of the other stuff that's in the store. So I've already stamped um, my image on Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock with Momento Tuxedo Black ink. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by outlining my image with my BG Quadruple Zero and my Colorless Blender and then later on I'll add clouds to the background but this way I won't have to get quite so close. So I'm going to go ahead and just go all the way around my image with my, with my BG Quadruple Zero and I'm going to start down here at this little piece of grass and I'm just going to work my way around my girl. And some of these little spots are kind of tricky. She's got um, her hair in there, but you can see through um, some of the pieces of hair, so I might miss some and have to go back and add a few, um, some blue later. So we're just going to go all the way around. Up here. Go around some of these great swirls she's got in her hair here. That one you can kind of see through in the middle. Go around that one. And this one's got a little break up there into her hair. And go back down until I get to this little strawberry right here. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my colorless blender and I'm just going to touch down on my girl and swipe right over the top of my blue green. Past, go past where you colored it so that it'll soften that edge. And this way by touching down on the girl too, if I got a little bit on her hair, it's just going to push that out into the background. And that'll make it a nice even transition for my clouds out here in the background and I won't have to worry about getting right next to her. So now let's go do her skin and for that I'm going to use E21, E00, and E quadruple zero and for her cheeks I'm going to use R22, R20, and R30 and that's just my favorite skin tones. Um, you can try lots of different ones if you want to go over to the store blog. I have some listed on the sidebar. Just scroll down under labels. There should be a little label that says Copic Skin Tones and they'll pull up a few there. So I'm going to start with my E21 and I'm going to actually go down here and work on her leg first. She's got just a little patch of leg showing right here on the underneath of her skirt. So I'm going to take my E21 and I'm just going to give me a little line on both sides of her little leg. And I'm going to do a little bit right underneath of her skirt. Take my pin up a little bit more. And then I'm going to grab E00. I'm going to touch down on the E21 and just lightly pull out into my white. And this is a really small area, so if you don't have any white left, that's okay. But if you do, you're going to take your E triple zero and you're just going to brush over that and fill that all the way in. Like that. And then we're going to go up here and we're going to work on her arm. So again, I'm going to just grab E21 first. And let's go right next to this little strap on her dress and down her, slit, her arm. And then same for this side. I'm going to go right next to that strap. And then I feel the sun's going to be kind of shining over, you know, on top of her arm. So I'm going to go down the back of this arm. 
and I'm just barely using the tip of my pen just to get a really small line. And let's go ahead and do our neck too. So we'll go right next to the strap, up her neck, down her ch under her chin, and she's got this great little neck um, crease right there, so I'm going to dab that just a little bit. Then I'm going to grab E00, and I'm going to fill this arm in. That's really tiny. And I've touched down on my 21, and I'm just very lightly pulling out into my white. And then we'll go down here and we'll start this arm. And touch down on our 21, and pull that out here into our white. And I'm just going to color her neck in. Such a small area right there. And then for the rest of this arm, I'm going to take my E quadruple zero, or triple zero, and just fill that in. Those are pretty small areas. Then let's go up here and do her face. So I again grab E21, and I'm going to outline her face. So I'm just going to start over here on the edge of her, by her eye. And I'm just going to work my way around with just the tip of my pen. And right here, her eye gets really close to her face. You're going to want to get just a little bit in there. And I'm going to go around her cheek, under her chin. And she's got a little bit of an ear showing right here, so I'm going to go ahead and give that a little dab. And then for her nose, I'm going to give her just a little bit of definition by drawing a little bit of a shadow line, like that. And then I'm going to grab E00. And we want to feather that line, so I'm going to touch down on my E21. And we're just going to pull that out. And right here, it's really close to her eye, so you don't want to get it in the white. And I'll pull that around here. And I want to go ahead and get right on top of that cute little nose line I just drew. And let's go underneath of her nose. And right up here to her cheek. And let's work this line up here so it's not so harsh. Like that. And then I'm going to take my E triple zero. I'm just going to fill that in. And I'm going to end up going over some of it again so I'm not worried that it looks a little patchy. So we're going to add some cheek color and then we'll add another coat. So for her cheeks, I want her to be really rosy this time. So I'm going to use E, or sorry, R22, R20, and R30. I'm going to start with my R22. And we're going to give, and R22 is really rosy. So I'm going to put a little bit of that right over here on the outside. And we'll do this side to give her lots of rosy cheeks over here. And then I'm going to grab R20, touch down on top of R22, and we're going to pull that cheek out here a little bit more. And I'm going to take R30 and just very sparingly just go right over the edge. And then I'm going to go back with my cheek colors, or with my skin tone. So I've got my E21. And I'm going to go right down the side of this cheek, down here towards her chin. And I'm going to give just the edge of this one just a little dab. And then I'm going to grab E00, and I'm going to soften that line. So I'm going to go ahead and go right over my E21, and brush over that cheek. Add a little bit more up here at the top of her face, too. Give that a little bit more of a brushing and soften that line there I have at the top. And then I'm going to take E triple zero. We're going to fill that in. Carefully go around her eye and around her cheek there. There, she's got nice rosy cheeks. And then for her lips, I used R22. So as long as we've got those out, I'm just going to go ahead and give those a little dab on each edge, like that. So I've left a little bit of white there. And then I'm going to take R20 and fill that in. 
And if you wanted them to be even rosier, you would just go over them a second time. And I think I'm actually going to take my R22, or my R20, since I still have it out here. I'm going to brush her cheek just another one more time. Give it a little bit more pink there. And then I'm going to soften my edge with my R30. And then I'm going to go over the whole thing with my E000, just to give it a little softening. So now let's go do her hair, and for that I'm going to use E55, 53, 51, and 50, and I'm going to start with my E55 and add some shadows. So right up here at the top of her hair, let's work on this side first. So I'm going to take my E55, and she's got this great little part right here. So I've got my pen more straight up and down, and I'm using just the tip to flick in some E55 strands. Like that. And she's got a little bump right here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that little bump. And then right here, she's got some little braids. So we want to go ahead and do a couple of those little braids, add some shadows inside the braid. That looks pretty good. And then she's got a little piece that's coming out from behind this little braid right here, so a little piece of bang. And then we want to, of course, add some back here behind her cheek. But I'm going to skip this little section right here because that's part of this little braid right here, a little strand of hair she's got coming out from behind. So I'm going to leave that so I can make that a little bit wider. And then, let's see, this piece looks like it's coming out from behind this other piece. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of shadows in there. And this one kind of dips back in, so I'm going to go ahead and get that. I'm just kind of looking at it to see where I want to add a few shadows in her hair. And there's really no rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of pick some spaces that look like they um, dip inside or curve back in. Like this one looks like it kind of curves inside, kind of bumps inside there. And this one, let's go ahead and do right here. And then it's kind of curving in right here, so I'm going to give that a little bit of color. Mm, let's go ahead and give this one some color. And of course I want to do a couple little bit down here on the ends of where they curl up. Just a little dab right here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Whoops, I forgot to move it up. Sorry about that. But there, I've got the end of these down here a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to my E53. And we want to just add a little bit more color on top of the color we just laid down. So we're just going to go right back over that 55 and add some 53. so far. And then I'm going to go with my E51. And again, you just want to add some more color. So I'm going to touch down on top of my 53. The last color I just put down. And we're just going to brush some more color on here. And we want to leave enough, some white still for our E50. A 
it up a little bit here. And we better get a little bit over here. And I'm thinking that maybe right in here, I'm going to go ahead and add, where she's got these great lines already, I'm going to add some of this color right in there. Okay, and then we're going to fill it in with E50. So I'm just going to brush all the way over all those colors and just fill that in. Go down here and just brush over all the colors. Blend them all together. And she's got some nice little shadows there in her hair. So now let's go do this other side. So again, we're going to start with E55. And so I'm going to start right up here to part again. And just brush a few streaks in here to darken that part up like that and then she's also got this little section this section goes over this section so I'm going to go ahead and brush a little bit right there where it looks like it's underneath work my way around here to the other side where this braid is Okay, so because this whole section is on top of that section, and then she's got some braid right here that goes in. So you want to get each one of those little braids where it looks like it's curving inside to the next one. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then this little piece right here looks like it's kind of coming out from underneath of her bang. So I'm going to give that just a little brush. And then, of course, I want to go down here in the back towards her cheek. Like that. And then this section here is dipping in, so I'm going to go ahead and give that a little bit of dark color there. And let's go ahead and bring that like that. I'm going to go this way so my line gets smaller. Okay. And then this section looks like it's coming over the top of this section down here. So I'm going to go ahead and brush the back side where it looks like it's coming underneath. Give that a little dab. And then where the swirl comes back in, I'm going to make that a little bit darker. And let's see, let's give this a little swirl. It looks like it's kind of dipping in there a little bit. And this one looks like it dips behind that piece. And then this piece is dipping, so let's go ahead and brush a little bit in there. Like I said, I just kind of go along and pick some pieces I think maybe are darker, like this piece looks like it kind of um, waves inside towards the inside, so I'm just going to brush that. And let's get a few of these bottom pieces right here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for shadows. So now let's grab E53 and we're going to add some color right on top. So put down your pen on top of your 55, add some 53. Let's bind her neck.
work our way down here to this bottom sections. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So then we'll grab E51 and do the same thing. So we're going to go right over the top of our 53 and add some 51. This little curly cue. Maybe a little bit on this side there. filling in with E50. So again, I brush right over the top of the whole thing. Kind of smooths my lines there. And just fill that color in. Right over the top of her cute little braid. That's lots of texture in there. Now I think I'll go back with my E55 and I'm just going to add a couple of little streaks up here at the top where her part is. So I'm just going to tip my pen more straight up and down. Just add a couple of little shadows right in here. And then I'm just going to leave the rest of her hair because it looks totally cute. So let's go do her eyes, and for that we're going to use, oh that's way too close, um, YG 97 and 63. So I'm going to start with 97, and I'm just going to dab each little eye more towards the top. And I'm just going to actually color over part of this little pupil right here. So if you color over in there, that's fine. I'll probably take my, um, Oh, my Copic Multi-Liner and color those in a little bit blacker. It didn't stick very well. And then I'm going to take my YG63 and just fill the rest of that little eye part in. And she's got a little white dot there, so I'm going to leave that white. It's kind of a little sparkle space. I'm just going to color that in like that. So next, let's go work on her dress, and for that we're going to use BG57, 53, and 11, and I'm going to start with BG57. Let's just start up here at these little straps and add a little bit, and if you're like me, these pins, I don't use, haven't used them very much, so if they're really wet, you might want to pop the end off of your, the other end off the cap and let them pressurize. That way you won't get a big old blob on your piece of coloring. Let's go right down the side like this, and let's give this a little bit of a shadow right here. I'm actually going to take the other end off my pen here for a second because it's looking like it's getting kind of wet. Okay, and then let's go continue down here with her skirt. So she's got a little skirt down here. I'm going to skip over her arm, and then I'm going to go down here. But she's also got a little piece of skirt back here in the back. So I'm going to give that a little dab of color. Okay, and then let's do the upper side of this pocket. Like that. And then for these little pleats down here, I'm going to go ahead and do the inside of the pleats. Let's do that one, this one, that one. 
I'm trying to leave the ones that look like they're popped towards the top of her skirt, not painted. Okay, like that. And then let's, of course, do this side of her skirt. And let's get this little section right here, like that. Put the bad lid back on there. Okay, and then I'm going to go with BG53. I'm going to brush right on the top of our 57 and add a little bit of our 53. Go down here and add some to our top of our dress. I'm going to go around that little strap. Same for this side. Let's go around that little strap. the side of her arm. And then we want to brush each one of these little pleats a little bit. Oh, and let's get this little skirt back here in the back. Okay, and I'll go down here and work on these little pleats. I want to get that line nice and tidy. this little ruffle back here and then pull some color into the middle here brushing that line off try not to color her hair there and I think I'll go around this pocket a little bit more like this And then I'm going to grab BG11 to fill it in. So I'm going to go up here and brush right over the top of that whole thing. Brush the edges of that. Work my way down here. Okay, that looks pretty blotchy, so I'm going to go ahead and go right back up here at the top. And I'm going to go over it one more time. Some straps. get a little bit of this lighter green over here on some of this other area because it is a completely different um, green. It doesn't have the quite so much blue as the 50s. And make sure to get that pocket right there. Okay. Oops, I'm going to get over here and get this little ruffle right there. I forgot that one. You may have to go for it a couple of times. And if you find it's not blending the way you want to, you could always do the tip to tip method and put a little bit of your um, 53 onto your 11 pin and do that. I just didn't mind that it was had that variegated shade in there. Okay, so now let's go down here and do um, her underskirt. So I made skipped one and I'm going to do 57 on this next little underskirt. And I'm also going to do her socks. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of shades to her socks. So I didn't do this top one. So I'm going to do this next one that's got all the scrunchies on it. Give that a little bit of color. And I want to make sure to get a couple of these little lines that she's got going right there. And then I'm going to grab 53. 
and then brush right on top of our 57. I just haven't used these colors um, very much, so I thought they'd be fun to use on here. And they went great with the paper that I picked. I think 57, both of these I think are fairly new colors. I can't remember now what colors came out last. Okay, and then we're going to take BG11 and we're just going to fill that in. Actually, right up here there's a couple of little skirt pieces that I was going to color the light color and I just forgot, so I'm going to go ahead and dab those right there. Okay, and then we're just going to color over these socks. So let's go do this next underskirt here. And for that, we're going to use some yellow. So I'm going to use Y21, 13, and 11. I'm going to start with my Y21. And we're going to use that to add some shadow. Because it's more of a mustard color. So we're just going to go right up here underneath of this skirt. And get in between some of those little pleats. Like that. And I'm also going to do the top part of these. Her, well, let's call it her second sock. She's got on a couple pairs, I guess. And then we're going to grab Y13, which is really yellow. And we're going to go ahead and just brush right over the top of that 21. But I'm going to leave a little bit of white at the bottom so we can put our 11 in there. This really yellows it up. And then we're going to fill it in with Y11. Okay, let's go down here and do these shoes. And for that, we're going to use E44, 43, 42, and 41. And I'm going to start with my E44 first. And so, well, here I forgot this little section of her sock right there. So let me grab my BG57. And this little section right here, I think, is the sock. So I'm just going to color that in. Okay, so I'm going to start with my E44. And we're going to give it a little bit of color... But we want to add some shadows to our shoe. So I'm going to go right down the back, add a little bit to the sole, and then I'm going to go right across the top of the sole right here. And then let's go ahead and add a little bit over here so it looks like it's a little bit darker. And then she's got on her little um, tongue of her shoe, she's got like a little striper on the outside. I'm going to color that in like that. Okay, same for the thing for this side. Let's add a little bit of color over here in the back. Down to the sole. And then brush around to the front over here. And bring that around so it looks like it's folding over. And then do this little tongue stripe thing here. I don't know what you call that, but... Okay, and I should probably put a little bit right here where the tongue is coming out from behind the shoe there. Make that a little bit darker. Okay, and then I'm going to grab 43. Add a little bit more of our color on there. I'm going to do this side over here. Let's add a little bit of this on this side, like that on the sole. And then we're going to go with 42. Brush a little bit more on our tongue. And we want to leave a little bit of white for our lightest color. And then we're going to fill it in with 41. Brush right over the top of that whole thing. 
And I'll get the sole down here. It'll go over my shoe one more time, soften it up just a little bit more. Those look pretty good. Okay, but she also has, up here on her socks, she has a couple little pom-poms, so I'm going to take my E42, and I'm just going to give it a couple little dots in there. And then I'm going to take my 41 and just quickly rub right over the top of it. Like that. And then, let's go down here and do this basket, since I got the rounds out. And for that, we're going to use 43 and 42. So I'm going to start with my E43. Let's do a little bit, or 43 on the edges, and then underneath of the basket there where the little rim is. And I'm going to use my 43 in each of these little um, spots where the basket looks like it dips in. And then let's do the bottom a little bit. And then I'm just going to fill it in with my 42. Just brush right over that. Give it a little scrub back and forth and mix it all together. And I think I'll actually do my 43 again inside these little indentations there so it makes them just a little bit darker. So that leaves us with this grass and these cute strawberries down here. And so I'm going to start with the grass. So for that I'm going to use YG95 and 93. And let's just go in with our YG95 and add some shadow. So for each of these cute little grass blades here, I'm just going to kind of go down and give them a little flick of color. And then I also want to add a little bit underneath of her shoe. So I'm going to go ahead and go right around her shoe here. And the basket. And these grass blades over here too, we want to add a little bit of color. Okay, that looks pretty good. Well, let's add a little bit of shadows underneath this, these strawberries here and these rocks. I guess those are pebbles. And, of course, we want to do a couple of little streaks on some of these strawberry um, tops. So I'm just going to give each one of those a little dab of color. And I'm not being too precise. I'm just giving them a little sweep. I'm going to grab YG93. And we're going to go up here and we're going to fill in some of this grass. I'm going to brush away from her shoe. around those rocks. Go around the strawberries. I want to do these grass blades up here. And I, of course, want to fill in my strawberry stem, so I'm going to go up here and add a little bit of color to those. And this one down here. On some nice looking grass. And then for strawberries, I'm going to use R24 and 22. So I'm going to start with 24. And let's just give each little strawberry some color right along the bottom. Like this. And then I'm going to take my R22 to fill it in. I wasn't too precise for those. I just kind of gave them a little dab in there. And then I'm going to go back and add some color, fill it in. And later we're going to put some stickles on there, so they'll be nice and sparkly. Okay, and these rocks down here, it looks like I maybe colored those a brown color. So let's grab E44. 
and just go right along the bottom of each of those cute little rocks and then fill them in with E43. Oops, there's a rock up here. We'll just color that one in. But that is summer, so let's put her together. So I'm going to do go ahead and do her clouds around her around her in my image here first. So I've got my little cloud template, and you can download this off the sidebar of the blog. And I'm going to use um, Ranger Distress Ink Tumble Glass, and I've got a little finger dauber. And I'm going to start my clouds. Mm, let's start them right here next to her hair. And I try to put my template um, on the places where I don't want to get blue. So let's say I don't want to color this little swirl of her hair blue. I'm just going to put my cloud right over the top of that. Okay, so I'm going to dab my sponge dauber into my ink. And I always start by brushing my sponge dauber on the ink on my cloud template first. And then I'm just going to brush off like that and get my cloud started. Okay, and you can also do the same thing over here. So I don't want to color these cute little hair swirls. So I'm going to go ahead and just lay my template right over the top of that. And just brush on some color. And we've got our nice cloud started. And then I look to see where this last cloud was. And so I don't want it to be in exactly the same place. So I kind of look to see what it's doing. And then I move my template. Like this one, I wouldn't want it to be the same bump on top of it. So let's move the cloud over a little bit. Okay. And then this one kind of bumps up over here, so let's add a template or a cloud going this way. And let's do one up here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I just work my way all the way up to the top. And this one's kind of over like that, so let's do this one like this. And I'll just be careful next to her hair there. And that's why I went around too with the um, the blue gray or the blue green to begin with, so I wouldn't have to get really close to her. But there we've got some nice little clouds around our girl. Okay, so we didn't have to worry about um, putting any ribbon on this time, so we can just go ahead and start attaching things. I've got all my stuff here. Let's go ahead and attach our girl to our P our mat. So get your trusty whatever kind of great adhesive you love. Out and start attaching things. And actually, I think I'll put my um, paint pen on now. So I've got my Sharpie white paint pen. I'm going to shake it. And I always shake it first with the lid on. And then it dispenses how much by how hard you press on it. So you just want to dab it a little bit. So I'm going to give each of her little cheeks a little dab. And then I'm going to go ahead and give her little lip just a little dab. Like that. Okay, and then we'll set that over here for a second to dry. And let's attach some of this other stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach this to the card base. got this piece that's got the wood grain on it or you can use the butterflies on the back. I like the wood grain so I'm going to go ahead and use that. And this um, paper is Simple Stories Vintage Bliss. It's really cute. Okay, like that. And then next comes this little piece with a flower on it or you can use the orange on the back. And the flowers will be all different because the piece of paper had, um, you know, different huge size flowers on there. And it looks like this one, I kind of tipped it to the side. So let's just make sure it's on whoops, the card so it will fit in the envelope. Stick that on. And then we'll do this little pink piece or you can do the um, notebook paper on the back. piece goes right here and it goes on top of the pink. So, oops, you move it over just a little bit. Okay, like that. 
that. Now we can put our girl on. And I actually did not pop her up this time. I know, it's amazing. But I thought with the dimension of the butterflies that she would be perfect if she was just flat. So we've got that. Let's put her mm, right here. She's at an angle. And then next, let's do this great uh, memory box graceful silhouette um, die. Isn't it pretty? I thought this was awesome. I couldn't wait to use it. So I'm like, oh, we're using that on the card this month. And so I'm going to use my liquid adhesive on that. And I'm actually, let me, so I don't get piece, glue everywhere. Let's get my nonstick craft mag out. And I didn't attach it all the way. So I'm just going to put some glue you know, on the stem. Maybe a little bit up here. And let's get a little bit up like this. But I didn't attach this top part up here down to the card. I let it kind of fling out. So that, let's do... But again, I want it to actually fit in the card, so... I made sure that the flower was, you know, not hanging off too much. If it does hang off, and then I'm just going to stick that down like that. And I'm going to actually make it go over this way a little bit, so I'm going to bend it. But then you got all these little flower parts that are not attached to the card. They're just free and sticking up. Okay, let's hold that down for a second. Let that dry. Okay, we'll give that a second to try. So let's add some stickles to our strawberries. So I just got my stickles and I give those a little squirt. When I also did some, I forgot to bring it in here with me, but some Spica glitter pin in her hair. So you can do that with the clear. And then up here in the corner, I'm going to put a couple of little... Um, half pearls, so I'm going to put my glue down to hold those. Yeah. Or you could use a glue dot too if you have some really small ones. Whoops. No escaping pearl. Stick that on there. And that one. Like that. And our flower looks like it's pretty good. And then this month in your kit, you got a package of these Petaloo butterflies, and they're three dimensional. So you just pick whatever one you want, and they already come with a pop dot on the back, and they're all nice, nice and popped up. I thought they were fun, so I thought we'd try them out. And then you just put those wherever you would like those. So let's stick one right there. And you'll actually have one left over when you, after you do all three cards. So you, one card could have extra butterflies if you wanted. And let's put this one right here. But I thought they were really pretty. Okay. So that is our July 2013 Copic Coloring Card Kit Summer. And I hope you had fun coloring with me today. If you have a question, just leave me a comment and I will get back to you. Otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for coloring with me. Bye.